Okay, we're back in Brooklyn. In the last decade, there was an investigation into narcotics trafficking and gang and drug-related violence in the Goannis and Wyckoff Gardens, public housing developments located in Brooklyn, New York. These two neighborhoods, separated by one city block, had suffered tremendously as a result of violent criminal activity carried out by several notorious criminal organizations, including the organization ran by the, the Heron Enterprise. As early as 1998, while investigating criminal activity carried out in the Goannis and Wyckoff neighborhoods, the federal government became aware of the defendant's drug operation, then still in the early stages of development. The enterprise and its reputation grew stronger over time, as Heron's status in the Bloods criminal street gang increased, and his reputation for violence became widespread in the community ultimately rose to become one of the highest-ranking bloods in New York, and his violent criminal enterprise was feared throughout Goannis and Wyckoff. Beginning in 1998, Ronald Heron, also known as Ra, Ra Diggs, and Rahim, was a high-ranking member of the murderous Mad Dog set of the Bloods gang. He began selling crack cocaine out of 423 Baltic Street. Ra Diggs used the apartment that he shared with his mother and sister as a stash house for his drug business. Some of Ra Dig's crew members stayed overnight at the residence, and the drug organization stashed narcotics and weapons in the house. Ra Diggs used his relationship with the Bloods and his reputation for spontaneous violence to enhance his prominence and to develop his organization. Ra Diggs eventually built up the Ra Diggs enterprise by recruiting dealers to sell drugs, muscle to protect his turf, and enforcers to intimidate the competition. Ra Diggs' status continued to rise thereafter, as he developed a large-scale drug trafficking organization, extorting, robbing, assaulting, and killing to enhance his prestige and power. Ra Diggs promoted his and the organization's reputation for violence through his actions on the streets of the Goannis and Wyckoff neighborhoods, and, by the early 2000s, had consolidated his control over the sale of narcotics from several buildings in the Goannis, including the New York City Housing Authority buildings in the Goannis, located at 423 Baltic and 198 Bond Streets. Ra Diggs' operation on the streets was briefly interrupted during a period of incarceration for narcotics trafficking and possession of a firearm, but records from the Maximum Security Southport Correction Facility and other evidence reflect Ra Diggs' continued involvement in the Blood Street Gang, the ongoing operation of his enterprise, and his preparation for his return to the streets of Brooklyn in July 2007. After his release from prison in July 2007, Ra Diggs returned to Brooklyn and quickly solidified the operation of his organization, continuing to extort, rob, assault, and kill to enhance his prestige and power. Ra Diggs recruited numerous sellers into the enterprise. He secured apartments within the Goannis complex to store drugs and firearms, and he secured apartments where crack cocaine would be sold. Ra Diggs associates assisted him in maintaining various stash houses in the Goannis housing development, where the drugs were stored and processed for distribution. Ra Diggs regularly possessed firearms in connection with the drug distribution enterprise. He also organized and led the activities of other individuals in this conspiracy, and utilized the services of various conspirators who acted as enforcers for the enterprise, and regularly possessed firearms on his behalf. On October 7, 2000, Terry Kramalize, also known as Slow, shot Ra Diggs in the left leg during a dispute over a drug debt. Ra Diggs was recovering at Kings County Hospital in Brooklyn on October 9, 2000, when Ra Diggs' cousins, who also sold drugs with Ra Diggs, shot and killed Ramalize in retaliation. Ramalize's murder at the hands of Ra Diggs' cousins enhanced Ra Diggs' reputation for violence and his ability to operate his drug business before his arrest in 2002 and after his return to the streets in 2007. Similarly, Ra Diggs' involvement in the September 8, 1998 shootout in Wyckoff, in which an innocent bystander was shot in the head, also enhanced his reputation for violence and his ability to operation his drug business. Two in his song, Slow Down Remix, Ra Diggs raps about the shooting and claims responsibility for the retaliation murder of Ramalize. When asked about the murder during his trial testimony, Ra Diggs confirmed that he had been shot by Ramalize over a drug debt and that his cousins had murdered Ramalize in retaliation, but claimed that he did not direct them to kill Ramalize as he was hospitalized after the initial shooting. Notably though, in Slow Down Remix, Ra Diggs stated, I don't respect a shooter cause he shot me in the legs, and two days later the little ninja was dead. See, if he was smart, he would have shot me in the head, 
because I can get you shot from a hospital bed. Moving along though. On June 16, summer of 2001, Ra Digg shot and killed Frederick Brooks in the lobby of 198 Bond Street. Ra Digg shot Brooks in the face, then shot him in the neck, in the back, and in the back of the head, and left him to bleed to death on the floor. Brooks, a rival drug dealer, sold crack cocaine in 198 Bond Street, a building that Ra Diggs controlled. Thereafter, in July of 2001, Ra Diggs was arrested after the NYPD found him hiding out in 133rd Avenue, apartment 7C, a stash house run by an individual who ran a significant narcotics distribution operation in Wyckoff. Ra Diggs was charged by the Kings County District Attorney's Office with the murder of Frederick Brooks. While on the street, Ra Diggs worked with members of his criminal enterprise and others in Goannis and Wyckoff to dispose of the firearm he used to kill Frederick Brooks. While in jail awaiting trial, Ra Diggs sent members of his crew and others to threaten witnesses who were to testify against him. On the day of Brooks' murder, two eyewitnesses made recorded statements to the Kings County District Attorney's Office identifying Ra Diggs as the shooter. The witnesses recounted that they were present in or near a truck with a third person outside of 198 Bond Street when Rod Diggs and Brooks argued loudly. One of the witnesses, after attempting to intervene in the argument, followed Rod Diggs and Brooks inside the building, where the witness observed Rod Diggs pushing Brooks against the mailboxes in the lobby. Rod Diggs pulled out a silver gun and shot Brooks in the head. Through a glass window, the other witness saw Rod Diggs choke and then shoot Brooks in the head. In addition to reporting these events in recorded statements to the Brooklyn Assistant District Attorney, the witnesses identified Ra Diggs as the shooter in a police lineup and in testimony before a state grand jury. Although the two eyewitnesses were initially cooperative, both of them refused to testify at Ra Diggs' trial. In separate proceedings before the trial court, both witnesses attempted to recant their prior statements and stated that they had been threatened by Ra Diggs and his associates. Ra Diggs' associate, James Long, placed a call to one of the witness's mother at her workplace, and the witness received a telephone call from Ra Diggs himself. Ra Diggs was also involved in the robbery of a John Doe, a local drug dealer who sold crack cocaine inside of 423 Baltic Street in Brooklyn. We will refer to the John Doe as Slick Back. In 2007, Ra Diggs directed two unidentified individuals to rob Slick Back. The individuals confronted Slickbacks and one of his friends inside of the building lobby. By coincidence, Slickback Associate, who also worked for Ra Diggs, happened to enter the building and tried to intervene to stop the robbery, but was unsuccessful. One of the individuals pulled out a handgun, while the other person searched their pants pockets. The individuals took between $600 and $700 from their pockets, along with diamond earrings belonging to Slickback, and thereafter left the building. Ra Diggs later found Slickback inside of an apartment on the 12th floor of the building, at which point he warned him not to sell drugs on his turf. Slickback ceased selling drugs in the building for several months, but later on returned to the Goannis and asked Ra Diggs for his permission to sell drugs at 423 Baltic Street in Brooklyn. Ra Diggs instead agreed to allow Slickback to sell crack on the condition that he obtained the drug supply from the Ra Diggs enterprise and, in return, Slickback would receive a percentage of the drug proceeds. Slickback also worked for Ra Diggs in supervising deliveries from suppliers to the organization to ensure that Ra Diggs street dealers received ample amounts of narcotics to sell. On May 9, 2008, Rod Diggs shot and killed Richard Russo in the elevator of the 423 Baltic Street building. In the days before the murder, Richard Russo had been present in the lobby of 423 Baltic Street with other members of Rod Diggs' crew that were selling narcotics. Russo was heard making disparaging remarks about Rod Diggs, questioning his dominion over the Goannis, threatening to kill Rod Diggs. On the day of the homicide, Russo was present in the lobby again along with other members of Ra Diggs' crew when Ra Diggs entered the lobby and confronted Russo. Ra Diggs directed Russo to enter the elevator, along with another member of Ra Diggs' crew, pulled out a gun and shot Russo in the head. After the murder, Ra Diggs gave cash to one of his homies in an effort to keep them from approaching the police. He also made efforts to eliminate forensic evidence and disposed of the firearm that he had used to kill Russo. Ra Diggs authorized his crew to murder a rival, Kendale Robinson, also known as Smurf. Ra Diggs was angry that Robinson was involved in a number of violent incidents in and around the block that Ra Diggs and his associates believed were harming the business. 
Rod Diggs, along with his lieutenant and one of his enforcers, spent significant time searching for Robinson in an effort to kill him. On September 13, 2008, on Ra Diggs' orders, one of his enforcers shot Robinson in front of 185 Nevin Street in Brooklyn with a 40 cal. Robinson ultimately survived his injuries. Ra Diggs was not there during the shooting, but other members of the crew witnessed the incident. In an unrelated case, Kendale Robinson was sentenced in state court on June 4, 2013, to life without parole, after pleading guilty to killing a 16-year-old female in the Goannis housing development in 2010. Robinson testified at trial on behalf of the defense and perjured himself during his testimony. He had also set off a metal detector after swallowing a scalpel in prison. But back to the story. Rod Diggs sought takeover Wickoff as well. In November 2008, Rod Diggs and his crew became involved in a dispute with individuals who were selling narcotics in Wickoff. Thereafter, one of Rod Diggs' workers, who had been selling crack cocaine for Rod Diggs in Wickoff, was told by Victor Zapata that she could no longer sell there. This dispute ended with Rod Diggs' murder of Victor Macho Zapata. After Rod Diggs and his lieutenant, Jorge Maya, learned that Zapata had told the worker she could not sell in Wickoff, Maya traveled to Wickoff to confront Zapata and his associates. On November 9, 2008, Maya was shot approximately five times. Rod Diggs and at least two other members of his crew recorded a meeting held in the hospital after Maya was shot. In the vid, Maya can be observed lying in a hospital bed recovering from his injuries and Ra Diggs, Maya and other members of Ra Diggs' crew can be observed pledging murderous retaliation against Zapata and his associates. On December 23, 2008, one of Ra Diggs' key enforcers was arrested as he fled in possession of a loaded 22 caliber and body armor. Ra Diggs fled the scene and evaded arrest. Thereafter, on February 26, 2009, Maya was arrested in his apartment in 426 Baltic Street in Brooklyn. He had a 4-5 and a lot of weed. He was federally indicted for this offense and pled guilty to a charge of felon in possession of a firearm. He was sentenced before the Honorable Raymond J. Deary on September 28, 2010, to 84 months custody and three years supervised release. And finally, on September 27, 2009, Rod Diggs located Zapata, chased him down, and shot him in the Wickoff courtyard. Zapata fell to the ground and Rod Diggs shot him multiple times at close range, killing him. On October 1, 2009, four days after Rod Diggs killed Victor Zapata, Rod Diggs and another criminal associate, Sharif Holmes, also known as Shaw Guns, were arrested in a BMW that Rod Diggs had double parked in the vicinity of Hoyt Street and Butler Street in Brooklyn. Police retrieved a loaded 9mm from Holmes. The firearm contained 10 rounds of ammunition, the serial number was defaced, there was evidence of discharge present. On October 5, 2010, NYPD officers in conjunction with Deputy United States Marshals conducted a surveillance operation wherein they observed Ra Diggs arrive at Club Amnesia, located at 609 West 29th Street in Manhattan, New York. Ra Diggs was in a car with Shondell Walker and another criminal associate of Ra Diggs. When Ra Diggs and Walker got out of the car, they were arrested. Officers observed the other criminal associate in the driver's seat, and when they ordered him to turn the engine off, he drove away. Several minutes later, NYPD detectives apprehended the other criminal associate at the intersection of West 11th Street and West Street in New York City. While effecting the arrest, officers recovered a 9mm high-point semi-automatic pistol with an extended clip inside the vehicle's glove compartment, in front of the seat, where Ra Diggs had been sitting. Rod Diggs was engaged in significant witness tampering in connection with his 2002 state trial for the June 16, 2001 murder of Frederick Brooks. Since Rod Diggs' arrest on October 5, 2010, the government has learned of numerous other instances of witness tampering carried out by Rod Diggs' associates at his direction. These efforts had continued after the arrest. At the end of the day, he was charged with a slew of crimes. He was sentenced to three life terms plus 105 years in prison. This about wraps it up for this one, as always, stay low, and thanks for watching.